what is up guys welcome and welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is day and today's video is going to be the next installment of our cybersecurity home lab so in the last couple of videos we went over the introduction went over configuring pfSense we also went over configuring security onion and in the most recent video we did a configuration of Kali Linux so this video is going to cover some interface um, setup and uh, firewall rules for pfSense so here is our words academy uh, right here in the resources section you can head over to the labs and the only thing you see here is a building cyber security home lab so let's gonna go over um to the section covering the pfsense interfaces and rules which should be after our kali linux right right here so um let me head over to my vmware screen so here in vmware um, as you can see i have all my machines running my pfsense i have my security onion my security onion management as you can see, here's my PFSense, and here are my Kali Linux machine. I will head over to 192.168.1.1. Um, ideally, um, it should ask you this. It should give you the screen, um, and you would have to choose advanced, and then you, you click accept the risk and continue. But I already had the configuration going in the background, so it didn't ask me. Uh, but yeah, the default username and password is uh, username is admin password is Excuse me. Username is admin password is pf since And you're logged in so don't save so we click next and we click next again and so our primary DNS server is going to be 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. And our secondary DNS server is going to be 404 and we click next. Uh, time zone. So you can select your time zone. Uh, let me see if I can find my time zone. Hopefully, it's not going to take too long to find the time zone. It should be somewhere around here. Uh, there we go. U.S. Central. Next. Um. So we're just going to head over down. We have these two. Uh, these two settings here. I'm going going to unblock these um, because I want to see. I think this could lead to some interesting things. But if you don't feel comfortable or safe um, unblocking the these, um, you know, just you don't have to. But I think this would create some uh, kind of nice alerts on our security onion when I eventually add Suricata to the PFSense configuration. But you know, this is left to you. Um, it's really op optional if you want to do it or if you don't. So let's go to the next stage. Uh, we're just going to click next here because we don't have anything. All right. So you want to create a new password. Um, you don't want to leave your default password. So let me do that real quick. All right. Don't save. And we're going to reload PFSense with new changes. It's going to take a... All right. There we go. I was, gonna, I was about to say it was going to take a couple of seconds but it was faster than me so we click finish this is taking a couple of seconds as well <laughs> there we go again um, all right so you know you can read through this but make sure you're, you're not you know voiding the, the warranty or you're not doing anything illegal you're not using it in a you know enterprise environment it's not for commercial use this is for a lab use so you know, don't abuse, don't abuse, abuse it. So click accept, and yeah, they're telling us thank you. Many people exp expend a lot of effort in improving and expanding PFSense software. It will be really helpful if you will please take a moment to complete this brief and anonymous survey to help guide those efforts. Uh, fortunately, I won't be able to do that. Ooh, interesting. But uh, I just click close. All right, guys. So we have PFSense up and running. Um, the first thing I like to do is to go over here to the general setup um, and here in web configurator I like to change the theme to dark it looks nicer and um, I think dark mode is it's the best mode for any web application or any application I'm using because it's easier in the eyes so that's left to you to do if you like the brighter the brighter configuration then that's totally fine um, but yeah, so we have that done. So our next plan of action is to head over to our interface assignments. Right now, uh, it's according to what we have here in our PFSense machine. Um, as you can see here, we have option one, option two, option three, option four, one and LAN. One and LAN. I don't know how I pronounce that. So weird. But 
uh, our next line of action is to go into each of these interfaces and uh, configure them starting from the Kali interface. So Kali and enter. So here we have an error. Um, it's a really simple fix. All we have to do is head over here, mm, right, right here and click static IPv6. And then we're gonna add the loopback address here. Click enter, apply changes. And then we'll go over to the diagnostics, actually no, uh, services. Okay. And then we head over to the DHCP server and RA. And then here in router advertisements, we'll click this and we'll select disabled and save. And then head back to our interface, go back to our Kali interface and then click uh, static IPv6 and then we'll click none and click save. And that's a really fast and simple fix. So after that, we're going to go into option one and we shall name option one victim network. So you can name a victim network or something like, you know, uh, organization, you know, it's, it's just something that I can just show like, no, this is a, this is like a, uh, you know, a small home or office or, you know, whatever you want to name it. I just want to name it victim network. So you can name it whatever you want. You know, it's really the, the customization is really, really flexible and really depends on the individual that is configuring the lab. So option two, we shall name it sec onion because that sounds cool and click enter and apply changes all right so next interface is option three and we shall name this span port and uh so let's kind of go over this quickly so here in pfsense you can see option three doesn't have an ip address because we didn't we didn't you know we didn't assign it an IP address. We we assigned it an interface, but we didn't assign it an IP address. So it kind of seems like it's not enabled yet. So we have to enable it in here, um, you know, by clicking this enable interface. So um, with that, the interface is enabled, and we click enter and apply changes. And that's the second to the last one. And the last one is going to be our Splunk interface. So let this load up. Okay, it's changes have been applied successfully. And option four. We will name it Splunk. Splunk is such a cool word. Splunk. And we will say apply changes. And we're all set. So let's go how, how that looks. So we have our WAN interface, our Kali, Victim Network, Sec Onion, Span Port, Splunk. And yeah, we're all set. So the next thing we want to do is head over to Bridges right here in this same place and click add and the member interface is going to be our victim network and I'm here in display advanced we'll head over to spam port and click spam port here scroll all the way down and it's a really long one and click save all right and that's smooth um, and so this next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to recreate a rule and it's kind of in terms of um, uh the two uh in uh the two um ip addresses uh the two configurations i blocked earlier on and it's gonna kind of ties into that so let's add a rule and we'll just say any and click save so i think it's, this will make for a really interesting uh some interesting uh logs and alerts that we might get in security onion um, as well as when I eventually add um, Suricata for intrusion, intrusion detection, um, I think we, we will have some nice alerts that we'll be able to work on. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all we're going to be doing in this lab. Um, PSS is a really, really great firewall. It's, you know, I think it's undoubtedly the best open source firewall. If you guys know any open source firewall that you think is better, leave leave a comment below. But I think it's 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 it, 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 it will be the best uh, open, uh, firewall. Uh, before I continue talking, let me just apply changes. All right, so we're, yeah, we're pretty much done. Um, and yeah, so I think firewalls are really essential to learn um, as a security professional. You know, your firewall in your organization is literally 
uh, your first line of defense, right? And have an understanding of how your firewall works, how to properly configure it. it it's going to be you know really good for you as a security professional because a misconfigured firewall could be leaving your network uh, open and easily accessible to attackers. So having an understanding of how to work with with firewalls, you know, creating rules, um, understanding the traffic uh, that's going through a firewall, um, and you know, looking at alerts, firewall alerts in in a sim uh, like Splunk or uh, or Kibana. Uh, it's going to be really helpful for, you know, as a security analyst, um, if you're going through, you know, alerts and things like that. So I think this is going to be really helpful in, in that regard. Um, and we're going to um, have a lot of fun with this firewall. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what we're going to be doing. So you can definitely play around with it, you know, create rules, uh, set up services, you know, look up tutorials and just try to, you know, find your way around PFSense. There's a lot to learn, a lot to uncover in PFSense. And, you know, I'm, I've barely scratched the surface, but you can go dig deeper uh, and you know you can break something uh, what I recommend right now as a matter of fact let's just do it right now uh, let's 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 create a snapshot of this machine so that just in case anything breaks we can easily fix it so uh, I'll say so we'll go over to our PFS machine right here and we'll click snapshot and take snapshot and we'll say post wizard config so if we do break anything or anything happens, we can easily revert to that snapshot. So I can really have two snapshots now. So I have the, uh, let's see. So I have the baseline configuration, which is just, you know, nothing on it, just like the, the setup. And then I have the post wizard config. So if I do break anything after this, I can easily revert back to the snapshot and, you know, uh, continue my security, uh, my PFSense running uh, normally. So I also, yeah, so do the same for, all of the other machines i have snapshots for each of these machines and as i progress on i'll be making more snapshots uh, but do realize that snapshots do take a lot of memory so only you know snapshot what you think is necessary and what you might want to go back to so yeah uh, that's, that's those are my recommendations um, um just keep playing around with pfsense and our next video um, we'll cover uh configuring a windows uh domain controller um, we're going to be creating an active directory environment that's going to be our in our victim network so that should be fun um, yeah, so if you like this video, please make sure to smash the like button. And if you're not subscribed yet, please be sure to subscribe. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. I create some um, awesome content um, on this channel. You can check out my other videos. They have really, really good stuff there. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to be creating more um, content on labs and different things like that. So you don't want to miss that. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your post notifications if you don't have them on yet so that you don't miss uh, a new video when I eventually drop the new videos. Um, and if you know anyone this video is going to provide value to, please be sure to share it to them. And uh, I truly, really appreciate you guys. Everyone that's subscribing, liking, commenting. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And yeah, thank you once again for watching the video. I will see you in the next video.